Hello everyone and welcome to the first part of the review for the Zio HD uh, Nano Talon uh, Mini Airplane. Uh, this is a very nice design because it's uh, modular and it's kind of uh, ready to fly. You just need to add your own receiver and transmitter and uh, you are ready to go. You don't need to glue it, you don't need to fix servos, you don't need to install motors. Uh, it's all pre-set up. And the best thing uh, is that it comes with a built-in stabilizer and uh, if you are a beginner you can use that for training and of course you can uh, later disable it for full manual flight but this uh, will uh, make it very easy to uh, be piloted at the beginning. So uh, without uh, talking too much about the box I'm just going to uh, take it out and we are going to take a look at the contents. So, you are greeted with a manual and this is a diagram for the stabilizer uh, and it supports, uh, it says here PPM, but actually it's uh, PWM uh, uh, connectivity and it also supports Spectrum uh, DSM2 but there's no SPAS uh, connectivity so in case you want to use a small uh, receiver you will not be able to do that you need a full size receiver with uh, regular outputs and of course on uh, this stabilizer you are going to connect the ESC, Elron elevator and rudder servos uh, also here it says how to calibrate it and it also needs a throttle calibration to properly use this stabilizer and there's also a quick uh, start manual with which shows us how to take apart and uh, put back together the plane uh, here are the specifications if you want to post this video you can uh, uh, read them and it comes also with a recommendation for the battery which should be a 3 cell uh, 1300 milliamps to 1800 milliamps but there are rumors that the ESC will take up to 4S batteries so let's assemble it as this should be quick to be assembled and these are the uh, I believe the these are the main wings yes and they come uh, with the center of uh, gravity already marked on them which is nice because you are going to be able to set up it very easy and you can see this has no servo motor on the wing it actually is uh, controlled by this shaft here and the servo is inside the main fuselage which is very nice design because you are going to be repairing less parts and changing less servos after a crash hopefully and these are the tail winglets uh, they use the same principle of control so they have a shaft this looks like uh, to be carbon fiber and I think it is carbon fiber and it has carbon fiber reinforcement here by using a rod and seems to have some magnets yes we have magnets there which is nice it's a snap design and this is the main body the fuselage which looks interesting it has um, underneath the body winglet also and it has plastic reinforcement here to make it uh, slide better on the ground without uh, wearing it too much it has some nice uh, hole here for uh, FPV camera it has here another hole for uh, taking in cold air and cooling the electronics and another hole here which acts like uh, a place to put your finger in take the cap off also this is where uh, the hot air from the inside the fuselage will come out and it will create an air current which cools the electronics so let's see what you get inside of course you get another cooling vent here a second one so uh, you should be fine running high power 
video transmitter so the uh, canopy has a uh, this uh, lever here which will uh, lock it and unlock it easy to take apart and this thing should also come out yes and it comes out really nice it has a magnet here and some plastic clamps here which holds it in place and there's the inside of it so you get the gyro pre-installed here it has wires already soldered so you just plug this into your uh, receiver uh, the uh, elevator and uh, air runs and so on are already connected uh, the ESC is here and it's already connected let's see if it gets some specifications on it I don't know if you can see it so it's a 30 amp and no it's no rumor it's 2 to 4 S LiPo compatible and it has a built-in um, regulator which outputs 5 volts uh, at 1 amp so it's not that powerful but should be enough for a regular low power build so what to get inside also it's the propeller one propeller and this is a, a self screen propeller uh, self locking so there's no need to add a locking nut on it and this is the additional cap you have access here also you can install some additional parts uh, inside underneath this part so it got a lot of space and as you can see it has an odd shape here with uh, a lot of holes so you can fix your own stuff and uh, the best thing you can do with this plane after you get bored with the built-in gyro maybe you want to take it to the next level and add some uh, proper receiver with SBUS and uh, proper flight controller you can always use something like uh, this like an AKK F4 Omnibus uh, flight controller uh, this is very small and you can uh, flash it with iNav which is destined to be used on uh, airplanes and you will get a lot of stuff with this uh, you can uh, hook it up to a GPS uh, antenna and you will have things like automatic return to home uh, program flight uh, you will have altitude uh, hold and things like that so you can really make this plane fly a lot more better by just using this tiny flight controller and there's plenty of place where you can install it uh, replace the original gyro uh, install it under the battery tray uh, it's uh, your choice to do that and of course you can uh, stack this with uh, for example an AKK uh, video transmitter like this model and uh, this will go on top of this just like that they will save space they match in size and uh, the video transmitter from AKK uses uh, smart audio port uh, which means that you can connect it to the flight controller and from the flight controller menu you can uh, set it up like setting power level frequency and so on and you will get also uh, the OSD uh, properly set up and shown in your video goggles so you will know uh, signal strength battery level heading height uh, speed uh, GPS coordinates and so on all in your FPV goggles so that's an upgrade to be taken into account but I'm not going to set up that now uh, I'm going to try to use the onboard stabilizer to see how the plane performs out of the box uh, to get the stock feeling of it to see if it is worthy of a beginner or an advanced flyer and uh, to see how uh, well it works or it doesn't so I'm going to use a basic receiver and uh, set up uh, uh, basic uh, flying plane with that to assemble the plane for the flight is very easy so I'm going to put the canopy back 
let's say that my plane is uh, operational already so I'm just installing this back uh, forgot to mention that you also get this clamp with screws uh, this will uh, screw to the nose of the plane like this and you can install a larger uh, camera on it or a secondary FPV camera uh, so that will help you install it and now uh, you will just need to put on the uh, rear winglets just like that uh, you are going to insert the carbon fiber rod into a plastic bushing there you just need to take care to get it into the right position now I'm going to install the other one as simple as that and the tail is now installed and the servers are already connected and now the main wings this will go in just as simple so this will go like that and it should clip in place uh, oops sorry this is actually from this part this side of the plane and it should go under this clip here and that was the clipping sound of getting it fixed and this one will go here and that's it now it's ready to fly you just uh, are going to screw the propeller and uh, power it on uh, you don't have to connect any kind of wires for the wings and that is very nice because on uh, smaller planes with detachable wings uh, you mostly have the servo on the wing and you need to connect it with the fuselage well not in this case because all the wiring is inside and there's no need to do that anymore so you can see very easy to assemble and disassemble it and that's nice because you can take this in a small box with you and when you have the mood of a quick FPV flight you just snap on the wings and uh, you can fly it and it's very easy to transport you can even uh, fit a small box in a larger backpack or a thing like that and take it on a bicycle for a ride so you don't need a car to carry a large airplane or thing like that because assemble takes a lot of space disassemble it takes almost uh, non space another well uh, thought design is the fact that you can take both canopies out even when uh, the wings are installed so uh, if there is something you want to quickly adjust or replace you don't even need to take the wings out so that's a very smart thinking and uh, you can see it has carbon fiber reinforcements and it's very sturdy so uh, it doesn't have a lot of flex it almost has uh, no flex just a tiny amount of play but that is a very small amount and only when I force it very hard so uh, this should be a very agile flyer with uh, no surprises so I hope that you have enjoyed the first part of uh, this uh, quick review uh, second part I'm going to install the receiver and uh, do the initial uh, setup and calibration uh, to have an idea of uh, what you need to do in case if you are starting with this plane from zero and of course there is going to be a third part with the flight test uh, which I am really looking forward but uh, I really need to do the second part of the review to install the receiver, set up my transmitter test all the settings, see if the servos are working normally, test the ESC and the motor and of course I need to find the proper battery to uh, balance the plane, uh, set the center of uh, gravity for it and uh, we should be able to fly it. So be sure to follow my next uploads and you are going to see all of that hopefully very soon. Until then, bye bye!